David Vizard here, and you're watching Paratech 10. What I want to do here is uh, shoot a, a short video as an addendum to the uh, uh, rocker uh, video I did. Uh, be about episode 16, I think. There's lots of things that I didn't say in that. Um, that, uh, on reflection, I think need uh, uh, bringing forward. First, let's look at the range of off-the-seat ratios compared with over-the-nose ratios that are available. I have seen rocker, now I'm including shaft rockers here as well. I have seen and tested rockers which are as low as 1.1 off the seat and as high as 2 to 1 over the nose. Now let me give you a few tips on, on these rockers. If you are testing a rocker which has a slow rate off the seat, it is unlikely that you will have to change anything that you had before. I say unlikely, that doesn't rule it out. Right, um, I had a, a, a set of rockers where the uh, ratio was slightly less uh, coming off the seat and so the overlap triangle didn't change and um, I found that the advance stayed the same, right, advancing or retarding uh, when replacing the uh, 1.65 rockers with a 1.85 uh, did not change. Anyway, here's a, a point. If you change the rate at which the valves come off the seat, it affects not just the uh, uh, possible intake center line that you're going to use, but also the lobe center line angle that's optimum. Now here's a neat little trick. Nearly all cams that are sold are on too wide a lobe center line angle. That, that is to kind of protect the cam grinder from the stroke of McGurk syndrome, which is if some's good, more's better, and too much is just right. The average guy tends to think that having a little over the top on the cam is not going to hurt. It's going to probably benefit. Now, that's not always true. So let's look at what happens when we put in a uh, um, a cam where the low center line angle has been widened to kind of protect the end user from their over enthusiasm. Let's consider two prime examples here. A 350 Chevy, well probably be 50, 355 because it's 30 over, will be almost certainly 30 over, and a 383. Right, both need different lobe center line angles. A typical 10 to 11 to 1 small block Chevy with a stock stroke and 355 inches with a typical 20216 valve setup is going to want a 108 degree lobe center line angle. That's with maybe uh, a 15516 rocker. Now, let's say you put a 17 rocker on it on the intake and the exhaust. What happens here is because the lobe center line angle is too wide, there's not enough overlap period there, right? So when you stick on a set of rockers that increase the rate off the seat, that means that the optimum lobe center line angle tightens up by about a degree. So the result is the cam, the the cam now moves into a more favorable timing uh, uh, event situation and your rockers therefore produce good results. Two reasons, one, the added lift and two, the partial correction of the lobe center line angle for that particular setup. So how much horsepower can you get? Typically, if you've got a 110 lobe center line angle and the engine's making, say, 380 odd horsepower and it's about 10 to 1, and you put on, you replace the 16s for a genuine 17, you will pick up 
somewhere in the region of 20 to 25 horsepower. 25 is about it. 22 is not uncommon. That's a good return. Now let's say that you put a set of high lift rockers on an engine that's got the right lobe center line angle or even say one degree too tight. What will happen is, is there will be very little power gain and sometimes there will be a slight power loss. You can say, well, put lift, high lift rockers. What could possibly go wrong? Simple. You've now got too much overlap triangle. So if you install rockers, high lift rockers, and the power does not increase or only increases a small amount, that is because you've got the lobe center line angle pretty much on the money. If the power increases a large amount, then that's because the lobe center line angle is probably too wide by as much as two, maybe three degrees or so. So if you know you've got a camshaft with too wide a lobe center line angle, high lift rockers are definitely a good move, right? You will see the benefit of those right away. Now let's look at 383. That needs high lift rockers. A 383 needs a lobe center line angle in the range that we're talking about of around about 106, maybe at most 107. I tend to opt for 106. Let me point something out here. It's better to err on the slightly tight side than it is on the loose side if performance is your sole objective, right? For most street cams, that extra degree on lobe center line, line angle tightening is not the end of the world. Yes, the idle may be a bit more lumpy than that, but hey, as long as the cam wasn't too big to start with, that will work. Now let me tell you something here. Having a cam on the right lobe center line angle compared with one that's two or three degrees off means that you don't need as long a cam to make that torque and horsepower. For instance, uh, a 275 degree on 108 for a 350 will out horsepower a 280 on 110. Well, it'll out torque it and it will probably match it for, for horsepower. So, lobe center line angle to make torque and horsepower is actually more important get, to get that right than it is duration. What else do I need to tell you? Um, yes, so last point here. If you're going to put a cam in and you pick a too tight a lobe center line angle, you'll know that when you do a test of the rocker ratio, high versus low, and the high ratio makes no more horsepower or even less. What else can I talk about here? I think that's covered what I needed to say about the uh, uh, additional information from my first video on this. Uh, last point here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that like button. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your attention. Oh, and thank you all of those who had a comment to make that was giving us advice on how we might improve our videos.